wait. Only Borelli is logged in. Borelli's here. I just texted Ulrich and Matteo. We're live. Nice to see everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's New York City Council meeting. At this time, will all panelists please turn on your videos? Again, at this time, will all panelists please turn on your videos? Silence all electronic devices. Thank you. Madam Chair, we're ready to begin. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 15th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Aaron. Blessed and present. Borelli. Present. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Deutsch. Here. Thank you. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Still here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Reynoso. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. 
Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. By the majority leader, we have a quorum. Uh, and Mr. Clerk, I just want to say I'm here as well, Councilman Keith Thank Powers. You. Thank you, Councilman Powers. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Bishop Dr. Roderick Caesar the third, the spiritual leader at Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, located at 110-25 Guy R. Brewer Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we honor you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us by allowing us to awaken this morning and to gather together to accomplish something that will be of great benefit to the residents of the region. Look upon us as we engage in the proceedings of this day and bless us with your divine wisdom and knowledge, which will enable us to make decisions that are in the best interest of our constituents. And I pray that we will work in the spirit of bipartisan cooperation and that at the end of the day, let us conclude with the knowledge that we have made a difference in the lives of many people through our action and our legislation. In the name of Jesus, the one who empowers us to serve Amen. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of life, of health and strength, and the ability to work together for the betterment of our communities. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would strengthen us, particularly in this election season, as our nation has been polarized and fractured by the effects of COVID-19 and racial injustices. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to look to the hills from where our help comes from and trust you in this season of uncertainty. We will not fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. And I'd like to make a correction. I recognize now that we are having today's invocation delivered by Pastor Roderick Caesar III, as well as Bishop Dr. Roderick Caesar, uh, the spiritual leaders at Bethel Gospel Tabernacle. And now I will turn it over to Council Member Adrian Adams to spread the invocation on the record. And I know that she's very excited uh, to welcome them to the City Council here today. Thank you so much. Council Member Adams. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. And you're so right. We've been blessed today by what some of us would call a double portion. I believe that this is the very first time that father and son clergy have appeared together to render the invocation for a stated meeting of the New York City Council. And it is my pleasure and honor to welcome the Reverend Caesar to the chambers today. Dr. Roderick R. Caesar is the Bishop and Overseer of the Bethel Gospel Tabernacle Fellowship International. He is the son of Bethel's founders, Bishop Roderick R. Caesar Sr. and Gertrude Brown Sr. For 10 years, he served as pastor of Calvary Full Gospel Church in Woodside, Queens, and for seven years, he assisted his father in ministry and served as the assistant pastor of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle in Jamaica, Queens. In November 1994, Dr. Caesar was consecrated to the office of bishop becoming overseer of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle Fellowship International. In 2017, he ordained his son, Roderick III, as senior pastor of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle. Bishop Caesar received undergraduate and graduate degrees from Northgate Bible College and Logos Bible College. He also earned a doctorate of divinity from Vision Christian College. Bishop Caesar lives in Hollis, Queens, where I grew up with his wife, Beverly, they have four children and five grandchildren. Pastor Roderick Caesar III is the lead pastor of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle in Jamaica, Queens. Installed as pastor by his father, Bishop Roderick Caesar. Pastor Roderick Caesar is a Gordon College graduate and holds a Master's of Divinity from Alliance Theological Seminary. Pastor Roderick resides in Queens with his wife, Stephanie, their daughter, Sila, and of course, son, Roderick IV. He is grateful for the examples of ministry set before him by his parents and grandparents and is looking forward to continuing the legacy of leadership with which God has entrusted him. And I am honored and blessed to have this great legacy cradled and shared within districts 27 and 28. One property is in Council Member Miller's district and one is in my district. And we want to thank you, Bishop Caesar and Pastor Caesar for your examples of true spiritual leadership, not just in New York, but internationally. We are so grateful for your gift of prayer in these chambers on this day. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much. And again, I, I thank you for the correction. I don't think we've ever had uh, two pastors preside at a stated meeting. We look forward to um, Roderick Caesar IV at some point here to join you all to make it three pastors um, praying over the council. And hopefully, and I'm sure you've had the blessing of hearing council member Adrian Adams sing before. Um, but if not, you're certainly in for a, a wonderful treat at your next service. At this time, I wanna thank council member Adams uh, for this wonderful introduction. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member Farrah Lewis. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of September 23rd, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, council member Lewis. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. M253 and M254, New York City Art Commission appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M255 and M256, council appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, good afternoon. Happy Thursday to everyone. As always, I hope that you and your families are safe and well. Since the COVID-19 pandemic started, this council has looked for various ways to help our city recover. So many industries have been financially devastated. Today, we have bills to help our taxi and restaurant industries. These two industries were struggling prior to COVID-19, but the virus caused massive decreases in revenues for restaurant owners and taxi drivers. I'm proud of these bills that we're voting on today because they address these very real issues and they in turn protect New Yorkers who have been hurt by the coronavirus pandemic. I wanna begin by acknowledging all of those who have died as a result of the coronavirus. 23,000, 905 New Yorkers have succumbed to the impact of the virus as of yesterday. This is a loss for our entire city and the loved ones of those taken from us by this virus are in my thoughts and prayers. And I know that they're in all of our thoughts and prayers. On Monday, our city lost a former first lady, first lady Joyce Dinkins. She was a champion for New York City and an advocate for causes that made our city better. Her life and legacy will serve as an inspiration to so many. We are keeping former Mayor Dinkins in our thoughts and prayers and their children and grandchildren. Uh, we are so sorry and sad for this loss for the Dinkins family and for our city. Our city also lost Carlos Rivera, the first Latino FDNY commissioner. Commissioner Rivera bravely led the department's response to the 1993 World Trade Center terrorist bombing. He passed away on October 12th at 86 years old. I'd like for us to take a few moments of silence to acknowledge the lives of those we've lost to COVID-19, former First Lady Joyce Dinkins and former FDNY Commissioner Carlos Rivera. Thank you. On Tuesday, the United States Supreme Court allowed the Trump administration to end the census count early. It will end tomorrow at 6 a.m. So if you have not filled out your census, please do so today, tonight, or early tomorrow morning before 6 a.m. This news is extremely disappointing. The Trump administration is using the census to wage a war on immigrants and on our democracy itself. We need every New Yorker, as I said, to fill out their census forms by tomorrow at 6 a.m. if you haven't already. This is about money and power for our state and city for the next 10 years. Now on to our agenda. Today, the council will be voting on several appointments. We'll be voting on the reappointment of Stanley Richards to the New York City Board of Correction and the reappointment of Jose M. Araujo to the New York City Board of Elections. Just before this stated meeting, the Democratic Conference voted on the appointment of Rodney L. Pepe Souvenir to the New York City Board of Elections. 
We'll be voting on several land use items, including the following applications submitted by HPD. Weeksville NCP and 1510 Broadway in Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuels District will provide over 150 affordable housing units. Three affordable homeownership applications in the 37th Council District and in the districts of Councilmembers Reynoso and Cornabigui to be developed under the Open Door Program that will provide 21 homeownership units and 22 affordable rental units. We'll be voting on four applications from the Landmarks Preservation Commission. The designation, the designation of Manita Street Historic District and Council Member, Member Rafael Salamanca's District and Hunts Point. The rescission of landmark designation, uh, I apologize if I mispronounce this, Beth Hamadrash Hagadol Synagogue in Council Member Margaret Chin's District, which had been destroyed by a fire and amendments to landmark sites in Council Members Ku and Perkins's district. We'll be voting to disapprove three St. Mark's Place. That application sought approval of a special permit to allow the transfer of development rights from the Hamilton Holly House to facilitate a new 10-story building in Council Member Carlina Rivera's district. 5914 Bay Parkway rezoning and an MIH text amendment, which will facilitate the development of a nine story mixed use building, including additional parking spaces that will provide 36 units of housing, 11 of which are affordable in council member Kalman Yeager's district. 50 old Fulton rezoning, which will facilitate the development of a new five story commercial building in council member Steve Levin's district. And finally, we'll be voting on a motion to file the industry city applications, which have been withdrawn by the applicant. This vote is on the motion uh, to withdraw. Moving on to our legislative agenda, we'll be voting on the following bills. The first bill is out of our Committee on Aging. Introduction number 2030, sponsored by our committee chair, Council Member Margaret Chin, uh, will increase the maximum income threshold for eligibility in both the senior citizen rent increase exemption and the disability rent increase exemption programs, otherwise known as SCREE and DRE, and both part of the NYC rent freeze program. In 2014, New York State increased the income threshold to $50,000 through June of 2020. The state authorized the income threshold increase after its expiration this year. And as a result, the city of New York must do the same and reauthorize the extension. We are doing that. And this bill is retroactive and would extend the current qualifying maximum level of income through June 30th, 2022. From the staff, I wanna thank Newshot Chowdhury for their work on this bill. Our next bill comes out of our Housing and Buildings Committee. It's introduction number 2093, sponsored by the committee chair for that committee, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, and it will amend the expiration date of the New York City rent stabilization law. In order to maintain the city's rent stabilization law, a housing and vacancy survey must be conducted in partnership with the United States Census Bureau. Due to limited capacity of the Census Bureau to conduct the survey concurrently with the decennial census, the state of New York passed legislation delaying the requirement of the survey by one year. To reflect the state's extension of the deadline, this bill would shift the current expiration date of the city's rent stabilization law from April 1st, 2021 to April 1st, 2022 this bill will go into effect immediately. And from the staff, I wanna thank Austin Branford for his work on this. Before COVID-19 hit, the taxi industry in New York was facing a sharp decline in revenue and in medallion values. The pandemic has only made these struggles more difficult. Today we'll be voting on a package of legislation aimed at providing increased oversight and support to this industry. I am grateful to the members who are prime sponsors on these bills and have kept this very urgent issue front and center. Our first bill, introduction number 1610A, sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres, will require the creation of an Office of Financial Stability within the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. The office will monitor and evaluate <clears throat> a range of factors related to the financial stability of the taxi industry 
including income and expenses for medallion owners, medallion loan terms, and market manipulation. The office will also be required to post online and to submit to the council, the mayor, and the Department of Investigation an annual report on the office's activities, an assessment of the financial stability of the taxi industry, and any recommendations regarding industry stability. Our second bill, introduction number 1584A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, will require any person with an interest in a taxi license to make annual financial disclosures to the TLC. Required disclosures would include information about income from and expenses related to each taxi license, any loan secured by a taxi license, and any other interest the person filing the disclosure has in any taxi, livery, or for hire vehicle business. Our final bill in this package, introduction number 1608A, sponsored by our Transportation Committee Chair, uh, Idanis Rodriguez, would require the TLC to evaluate the character, honesty, and integrity of taxicab brokers, agents, and licensees when they submit a new license application or when they submit an application to renew an existing license. The commission would be authorized to refuse to issue or renew a license upon a finding that an applicant lacks good character, honesty, and integrity. The commission would consider, among other factors, misstatements or misrepresentations in connection with an application and commissions of fraudulent, deceitful, or unlawful acts while engaged in the business licensed by the commission. And from the staff, I wanna thank Elliot Lynn. The taxi industry is hardly the only one that is suffering now. We all know that the pandemic has hit our economy severely. Our restaurant industry has been particularly hard hit and outdoor dining has provided a lifeline to many rest restaurants. I'm so proud of this council for passing uh, the bill to create outdoor dining and I know many New Yorkers have enjoyed outdoor dining during the pandemic. It has enlivened our streets. It has offered us a much needed chance to socialize. It has been a bright spot during this very dark time in our city and the council will make sure it continues. Introduction number 2127A, sponsored by council member Antonio Reynoso, will extend the expiration of the city's current outdoor dining program until, 20, uh, until, uh, until September 30th 2021. This legislation will also the, requ require the city to create permanent outdoor dining program for the future that uses city road space. It will, the bill would also allow for the use of propane heaters and outdoor dining areas subject to guidelines issued by the New York City Fire Department. I want to thank Council Reynoso for leading on this effort. And I want to say that I'm really proud of this program. We're also going to have to potentially come back and fine tune it over the winter and spring and next summer before the current program expires and the new program is set up in permanence. We know that there are some community concerns uh, and we wanna be responsive while still allowing this space for restaurants who really need it during this hard time. So this will be an ongoing conversation. I wanna thank from the staff, Balkis Mirig and Leah Skirpiak for their work on this. I now turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader uh, thank you all for being with us today to vote on these important bills. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he, will, he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. No, interesting, okay. <laughs> All right, we have a very robust legislative um, program today. I'm surprised no members have signed up to speak, but we will continue to move on. Report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Aging Intro 2030 Scree Injury Programs. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing Preconsidered Intro 2127A Outdoor Dining. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings Intro 2093 Rent Stabilization Law. Coupled on general orders. 
Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 658 and Reso 1446-50 Old Fulton Rezoning. Couple of general orders. LU 666 and Reso 1447 through LU 670 and Reso 1451 Property Tax Exemption and Various UDAPs. Couple of general orders. <clears throat> LU 671 and Reso 1452 through LU 673 and Reso 1454 landmark designations. Couple of general orders. LU 674 and Reso 1455 through LU 677 and Reso 1458 industry city. Couple to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 678 and Reso 1459 and LU 679 and Reso 1460 5914 Bay Parkway rezoning. Mm -hmm. Couple of the general orders. LU 680 and Reso 1461, 3 St. Mark's Place. Motion to disapprove. LU 681 and Reso 1462, Manita Street Historic District. Couple of general orders. LU 682 and Reso 1463 through LU 685 and Reso 1466, 1510 Broadway. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered M255 and Reso 1467, approving the appointment of Stanley Richards Board of Correction. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered M256 and Reso 1468, approving the reappointment of Jose M. Araujo, Queens County Democratic Commissioner of Elections. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1554. 1584A and 1608A taxi cab licenses. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1610A TLC Office of Financial Stability. Amended and coupled on general orders. And at this time, I'm asking for the clerk to conduct a roll call vote on all of the items that we just mentioned that are coupled on today's general order calendar. <clears throat> Excuse me. Adams. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time Thank you. Ma Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Over the past few years, we've all become aware of the struggle and overwhelming debt of taxi medallion owners. Taxi medallions have become a money pit for thousands of drivers in New York City. It's time that we mandate this reporting to get a handle on this unregulated sector that has allowed unscrupulous people to exploit hardworking drivers. Intro 1584 will help to root out bad actors and give way to the oversight that should have taken place all along. I ask my colleagues to support my legislation, Intro 1584, and all of the legislations in this valuable package of bills to protect our struggling taxi industry. Thank you, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. I'm Bree Samuel. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time Thank starts you. now. I just wanted to, you know, really highlight the fact that at a time when we always feel just kind of like a lot of gloom and doom and um, 2020 has been just a rough year for everyone, I am just so proud um, to be able to sit with the land use um, committee and everyone to be able to really discuss and bring truly affordable housing to communities that desperately need it, especially now. And so I'm very proud of the projects that we'll see coming up on Broadway um, in the Bed-Stuy area of my district in Ocean Hill, as well as uh, what we'll be seeing um, along Crown Heights and in Weeksville. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to share that because there's always light at the end of the tunnel and it just really brings hope to the community. And the last thing I want to say is um, I am very proud of Dem you know, my Democratic colleagues in voting on behalf of making sure that we have a replacement and we have a commissioner in Kings County. And I am very proud of Rodney Pepe Souvenir as an amazingly intelligent and competent Black woman in New York City and having her lead our borough at um, the Board of Elections, it's very needed, especially now. And so I am proud to um, you know, stand beside Miss um, Pepe during this time. And so with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you and congratulations to you. Thank you. Ayala. Aye on all. Baron. 
to explain about permission granted, although your connection is a little bit uh, challenged. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, great. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, I want to commend my colleague, Council Member Alika Ampi Samuel, for her great housing project. You know, we've got a competition going here between the two of us, and uh, I commend her on the affordability of her project. I want to also compliment our, our new Brooklyn commissioner for her appointment. I expect that she'll do great things as she's indicated to me in the conference that I had with her. And I vote aye on all with the exception of 670, 678, and 679. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Thank you, Council Member. Those uh, land use items? Council Member Barron? Yes. yes, those land Thank use you. items. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all except pre-considered uh, M255, the company resolution 1467, uh, and intro 2093. Thank you. Brandon. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Matteo. I'm voting no on 20. No on M250. Thank you. Can you repeat that once more? It was a difficult uh, connection. Sure. No on 2093. And no on. And no on. Councilmember Matteo? And 255, 1467. 255. Can you yeah. hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You got it? M255 and 1467 you, and 2093 yeah. on notes. Thank, Thank you. you. I got it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Chin. I vote at all. Cohen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. I vote aye on all. I'd like the permission to vote all on all land use call-ups and I vote aye as well. Thank you. Cornegie. Council Member Cornegie. Council Member Cornegie, you're on mute. Oh, I'll come back. Okay. Uh, Council Member Deutsch. Uh, no on Rezo's uh, 1455 through 1459, LU 674 through 678, dying the rest. Diaz. Yes, no. Drum. Aye. Thank you. Eugene. Councilmember Eugene, you're on mute. We'll come back. Sure. Gibson. Can, can you hear me now? No. Oh, Council Member Eugene, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, I, would, I would, yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Council Member. Thank you very much. Council Member Gibson. I vote aye on all. Joe Nye. 
綾野ノ Thank you ゴレンチェック Uh, just、uh, permission, Madam Majority Leader, to very briefly explain my vote. Permission granted.、Uh, I want to,、um, I, I had some concerns about、uh, intro 2020, 2127,、um, and I,、uh, I'm grateful to the sponsor for reaching out to me, even though I didn't get back to him yesterday. But I was, uh, was uh, uh, happy to hear the speaker address those、uh, concerns in his remarks today. And I also heard from the administration. I am concerned. Uh, about making this permanent, although I do support it.、Um, but I, we haven't gone through a full season,、uh, four seasons of this.、Um, but I think it, on balance, it will be a good thing for the city.、Uh, so, with those reservations in mind and my concerns, I'm still going to vote for the bill and I vote aye on all. And thank you for indulging me. Thank you.、Uh, Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of M255 with accompanying Reso 1467 and intro 2127, of which I vote no. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. As a Council members, we have a vote on appointees, including the Board of Elections. Today, the Democratic Commissioner for Queens came before the Rules Committee, where I was able to ask questions and receive commitments to support online voter registration, post jobs, and reject patronage appointments who are unqualified, follow anti nepotism policies, and a verification that any and all fines that have been paid involving prior incidents、uh, promise to do their part to implement ranked choice voting for 2021 and to address long lines on Election Day. Given the bipartisan nature of the Board of Elections, with party control mandated by corrupt Albany legislature and our role as a council within that framework, thank the Rules Committee,、uh, led by Karen Koswitz, for the opportunity to ask questions. Vote aye on this appointment and aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted. Time、thank、starts、you. now. Regarding intro 2127, I'm glad to see a willingness to implement a pilot for outdoor dining. So I will be voting yes. But I think we need to be very careful not to lose sight of the potential problems this can cause. We need to be sure there is vigilant oversight and the ability to troubleshoot issues as they arise. Of course, we want to support our restaurants. But we cannot overlook the very real problem safety, public safety issues. We don't want bad actors abusing the system by, overta by overtaking the level streets where we have vehicle and pedestrian traffic competing with diners, garbage pickup, UPS deliveries, and snow removals in the winter. We should also be mindful of the quality of life impacts on tenants. Who live upstairs from restaurants. Finally, while outdoor dining is a great benefit to some restaurants, many are left out. We need to be sure we take care of those restaurant owners who cannot participate in outdoor dining because of their geographic locations. We want our city to get back on its feet responsibly, but I think this is a good bill that gives us the opportunity. As long as there's oversight. So I will be voting yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ku.、Uh, Councilmember Cornegie? Okay. Councilmember Council Kaz, I'm sorry. Okay. Councilmember Kozlowitz? Thank you. May I be ex excused to explain my vote? Always. The other day in the Consumer Affairs Committee, I voted no for 2127A. But I have certainly changed my mind because I realized that I didn't quite understand the bill. The fact that we're going to revisit it makes me very happy. I happened to walk down my street、uh, yesterday, Austin Street, which is a very big commercial. District in my、uh, in my district, 
And I was so depressed seeing all the stores that have closed during this pandemic. And there's no question in my mind that these store owners need our help desperately. I love eating outside. My concern, my biggest concern was that how it was going to be when it would snow and how the plows would be able to come through the narrow streets, the two-way narrow streets. I feel very happy that I could change, I can change my vote in the Consumer Affairs Committee, but I certainly am going to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye on all. Levin. I vote aye on all, uh, and congratulations um, to all the appointees, um, uh, and, and particularly to my friend uh, Stanley Richards for his reappointment to the Board of Corrections. Levine. I vote aye on all. Lewis. I vote aye on all, and I would like to congratulate Ms. Rodney Pippis souvenir on your appointment. I know you do great work in Brooklyn. Thank you. Myzel. Yes. Thank you. Menchaka. Aye on all. Miller. I on all with the exception of 2127A, for which I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Moya. I on all. Perkins. I on all. Thank you. Powers. Proudly I and all with uh, congrats to my friend Stanley Richards and also proudly in favor of outdoor dining. Again, thanks so much. Reynoso. Can to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. Time starts now. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, I just want to uh, thank all my colleagues that are voting yes on the Arthur Dining Bill, um, especially the ones that had reservations. Um, I think it's extremely important that the Department of Transportation and the Consumer Affairs Department uh, address many of the issues that are happening in lo at a local level. But in a time when we've seen very few positives, um, especially when it comes to the help that government is giving for small businesses, um, I'm happy to see that we're going to be able to do uh, extend outdoor dining. I do want to make sure that we also pay attention to the workers and ensure that they're also protected during this time, which I don't believe we've done to this point. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Assembly, uh, I'm sorry, Council Member Alika Amper Samuel uh, for the great work that she's done in bringing affordable housing to her district, especially in Bed Stuy. Uh, but for too long, the burden of building affordable housing has fallen solely on Black and Brown communities like. Uh, like Council Member Amper Samuel's district. Uh, so while I'm happy to see that she's been very successful at getting extremely low rents for the people that need it the most, there are two land use items uh, in land use item 678 and land use uh, 679, uh, Bay Parkway rezoning, where they will be giving, uh, a, we will be giving a rezoning to these developers for a one bedroom apartment that will go for $2,500. Um, I want to repeat that one bedroom apartment for $2,500. That is not affordable housing. That is not helping us get out of the, the hole that we're in, the homelessness situation that we're fighting for. And this just happens to be in the district that's mostly affluent and white. Um, so again, to all my colleagues that are fighting for affordable housing and think it's uh, the most important issue of our, in our city, uh, we have to be very careful about um, allowing for council members uh, to not build affordable housing in their districts and continue to put the burden on 
districts like mine and uh, Councilman Van Prishama. So thank you so much for your time. And I will be voting aye on all, again, with the exception of land use 678 and land use 679 and accompanying resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Congrats to my colleagues. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Okay. Rose. Rosenthal. I vote aye on all with congratulations to all my colleagues who are sponsors of bills. Um, I especially, I want to attach myself to the words of Council Member Kozlowitz. I think um, a lot of thought went into the bill to answer concerns that all of us had had and, and we've heard from our constituents. The one piece that I think is outstanding that is still a little troublesome is um, the piece uh, on the ADA. Um, I think their concerns have not quite been addressed and I hope that Department of Transportation will take that under advisement as they um, approve permits, uh, you know, restaurant by restaurant. But overall, it's a great bill and, and Council Member Reynoso, you're right. Um, it's good to have a little bit of happy news. And, and this is certainly something that will help our small businesses. So kudos to you for that. Thank you all very much. Oh, sorry. And I on all. Thank you. <laughs> Salamanca. I on all. Torres, I don't know. excuse me, thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I, I just wanna, as I congratulate my colleagues on their important bills uh, and important victories in their districts, I just wanna note for the record to my colleagues that um, outdoor amusements, in Coney Island for the first time in New York City history have been closed for the entire season. Um, that has had a ripple effect on our local economy. So I, I think the, the, the idea and, and the measure of outdoor dining is very innovative. It's important to support our small businesses, but not every neighborhood is, you know, has the type of uh, profile and, and uh, situations like parts of Manhattan and others like Southern Brooklyn is also a part of the city. And the amusements sit on city owned land. The city of New York is still charging the amusements and the businesses on the boardwalk rent every month, even though they're closed, um, fees uh, as well. So we need a plan that's truly five borough. We need a plan that's truly inclusive of every region of this city that includes neighbors like Coney Island, which is now experiencing a 30% unemployment rate as a result of this pandemic and, 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 the, and the damage that, that this has done to our local economy. So I, I will be supporting these measures, but we need to do better. And we need to be much more inclusive of every region of this city and not just some. Thank you, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. So first of all, I'd like to thank the speaker and all the colleagues for working together and passing a number of bills that we hope we hope the yellow taxi industry and the liberty and the taxi industry overall. We are late. We are against the clock. We know that we are not in the same financial situation as we were before the coronavirus. But as we are holding this hearing right now, there can be a medallion owners, especially one of those 6,000 individual medallion owners that could be thinking about committing suicide because he or she doesn't have the money to pay, you know, the monthly risk due. And I think that one of the areas that we know that we have to do better to be sure that those lenders 
those individuals, those brokers who also have been in the business it, it, to work with the yellow tax medallions are good characters. So hopefully this bill will help us at the same time that I also call all the colleagues to be sure that we put pressure on City Hall to get funding, to get financial assisting also from the federal government so that we can put a financial assisting to those individual medallion owners and the drivers. With that, I go I Thank you. The loan. I vote aye and all, and just a brief thank you to the speaker and the sponsor on the outdoor dining to hear the concerns of the Queens Council <coughs> uh, about just the permanency of the wonderful program and the need for us to have to relook at this within a year. So thank you for doing that. And again, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. First, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Council Member Reynoso in particular. I know that the administration has uh, adopted and in many ways embraced open restaurants, but I think the council and in particular uh, Council Member Reynoso have really uh, driven this discussion and helped save our uh, small businesses and so many restaurants. And this is uh, really not just a Manhattan issue. In my district, our restaurants are able to survive uh, to this point, uh, many of them, because of this program. It is really one of the best things that we have done in a very long time. And I hope uh, that the city at some point will take up open culture and work to save some of our cultural organizations in particular performing arts spaces before they go out of business. Uh, on the business before us today, I'm voting aye on all with the exception of M256 and Rezo 1468, on which I vote no. Uh, that is the Board of Elections appointee. Again, as I said in Dem Conference, this is not about the individuals. It is about the process uh, by which people are nominated and uh, political machines should not have a role in this process at all. Uh, we saw last year in Queens with the Tiffany Caban race, uh, how wrong things can go. And uh, I just think the whole system needs to be absolutely uh, revamped and we need to take out of any consideration with respect to the Board of Elections, uh, political machines and political machinations. Um, hopefully Tiffany will be a part of this body next year and be a part of that change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time Second. starts now. Thank you very much. Uh, I vote aye on all. Uh, but uh, I'm voting no on uh, intro 2127, and I want to explain why I'm doing it for the same reason that I voted no in committee earlier this week, along with some other colleagues. And I appreciate uh, that they've revisited their thought on this, um, but I'd like to briefly explain my thoughts on this today. Uh, I supported this bill uh, when we first created the program, and I think we got there quicker than the administration did on trying to recover restaurants and, and give them the opportunities uh, that are necessary for them to you know, to, to hang on, uh, to get past where they are today, uh, to be able to survive into the future um, uh, with the hopes that, that they can continue doing that. We've lost uh, tens of thousands of small businesses throughout the city, including many restaurants, including many in my district and throughout the city. Uh, but in my view, to permanentize uh, uh, the program today without the benefit of reviewing the upcoming winter experience of this program is probably not the best way, at least as I see it to go. Uh, there's no rush to adopt this bill today in October. We could do it in January, February, March, April um, with more opportunity to see, for example, the interplay between sidewalks and roadway seating uh, with the city snow plows, uh, with store owners and homeowners ability to shovel snow to place out trash for pickup in an environment of snow. We don't know what that looks like yet. And um, uh, we don't know how that will work. I do support section one of this bill, which authorizes the use of heating 
um, equipment subject to fire department guidelines. I think that's wise because it does give restaurants this opportunity. Um, and I support section three, which extends the, uh, the uh, expiration of the program from December 31st to the end of next summer. I, I think that, uh, as I've said on this, in, in this council, on this floor and committees, there are more things we ought to be doing for restaurants, for small businesses across the board. We ought to be trying to figure out to get more uh, expansion of their ability to not just seat outdoors, but also indoors. Time to uh, but for these reasons, uh, Madam President, thank you for giving me this extra few seconds. For these reasons, I respectfully vote no on this bill. I own all the rest, and I thank everyone for their hard work on getting it to this point. Thank you, Councilmember Yeager. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Carnegie. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Our housing and rent stabilization laws depend on accurate data. As H5, HPD testified, the New York City Housing Vacancy Survey requires thousands of interviews over nine months to gather accurate information. That's information about one of the most unique housing markets in the country and data that reflects the experiences of tenants. tenants. From reporting on mold and musty smells to pests to how often the heat breaks down, this survey is a tool for understanding housing, understanding what tenants face and understanding what investments we need to make to protect New Yorkers housing security. By extending the deadline for this critical survey, intro 2093 allows the Census Bureau and HPB to devote the resources necessary to carry out this survey to the best of their ability. Without competing with the 2020 census for time, attention and resources. The 2020 census is critically important and this housing vacancy survey, survey is also critically important. The two should not be in competition for resources. Thanks to Speaker Johnson, my colleagues and the team here at the council for acting to make this important change possible. And with that, I congratulate all my other colleagues who had great bills uh, and I vote aye on all. Thank you, council member. Thank you, council member Rose. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Please bear with us as we are receiving the tally at this time. Just real quick. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. All items in today's general order calendar have a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following. Introduction 2127A has 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions, M255 with companion resolution 1467 has 45 in the affirmative, three in the negative, zero abstentions. Land use item 670 with companion resolution 1451 has 47 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Uh, land use item 678 with resolution 1459 has 45 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. Land use items Land use item 679 with resolution 1460 has 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, zero abstentions. Land use items 674 through 677 and their accompanying resolutions 
have 47 in the affirmative, one in the negative with no abstentions. Introduction 2093 has 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, zero abstentions. And finally, M256 with resolution 1468 has 47 in the affirmative and one in the negative. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Martin. All of the items on today's general order calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. There are no resolution on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Barron and Rivera have signed up to speak. Okay, we will begin with Council Member Barron. I begin. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to call my colleagues' attention to a reso that Council Member Cornegie and I are introducing. And this reso is in support of Assembly Bill 3566, introduced in the Assembly by uh, Assembly Member Felix Ortiz. And the bill talks about the recent incident where Amy Cooper called the police and made a false accusation that she was being threatened by a black man. And the New York Times recently talked about an increase in the number of race-based falsely reported crimes. And the states of California, Michigan, and Oregon are already engaged in determining in what ways they're going to penalize folks who make false reports regarding race, national origin, gender, religion, age, disability, and sexual orientation. So I wanna urge my colleagues to review this legislation and to join on in support of this resolution by Council Member Carnegie and myself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Majority Thank you. I'd like to speak today about the lasting and continued damage caused by the archaic criminal statute widely known as the walking while trans ban. The use of this statute by law enforcement to target trans women of color on the basis of alleged suspicions of loitering for the purposes of prostitution has resulted in women being criminalized for the length of their skirt or the streets they choose to walk on. I've been fighting alongside my colleagues here in the council and my state colleagues since last year to repeal the walking while trans ban included through council resolution 923-2019, which I sponsored and which currently has 30 co-sponsors. Even if we are successful in repealing this deeply discriminatory law, we will have to continue working to provide resolution for the countless New Yorkers with criminal records because of this criminal statute. The walking while trans ban is currently one of only two violations in the entire state penal code that can never be sealed on your criminal record, which has led to thousands of New Yorkers unable to access public housing, renew immigration filings, or place their children or place their children place in foster care. Today, I am introducing resolution 1444, which calls on the state to pass legislation to permit the sealing of criminal records for those convicted under the walking while trans ban criminal statutes and to apply it retroactively for anyone previously convicted under the law. Equally under the law is still Equality under the law is still far from a reality, but it is up to us to hold our legal system accountable. I hope you'll join me in supporting this resolution and calling for hearings for both of my resolutions in the Committee on Public Safety. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Parliamentarian? Yes, Council Member Vallone. Council Member we'll Vallone. Be the final Council Member. Okay. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, I did not have any prepared remarks. I just wanted to let everyone know um, that my wife is Armenian. My children are therefore half Italian, half Armenian. Uh, they are first generation immigrants. And I wanted people to know that once again, Armenia is under attack. It's a very peaceful, loving Christian nation. And Turkey annihilated 1.5 million in the genocide in the early 19th century. And once again, we have a piece of land controlled 
by Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and this small land of Artsakh is under attack. And there's been such little, little cry in today's world for justice for the Armenians that are being slaughtered once again. And I had to say something since my children and my family and seeing the hard work that they have done. And the cry is peace for Armenia. That's all the hashtag is. That's all the call is. It's not for war. It's not for retributions. It's not for sanctions. It's for peace. And then today, when all we do is scream and yell and ask for a million different things for some something that happened in another city or country, you have a people that are asking for peace. So I had submitted a resolution for that. I know it's difficult for the council uh, to get into international politics, but we did as a council uh, under my father and in past recognize the Armenian genocide uh, and demanded Turkey take responsibility for that. Um, and I, I would ask that we consider the possibility of asking the resolution to ask for peace, to ask for our brothers and sisters in Congress to reach out because the United States always has a play and a hand in, in politics overseas. And there's so much involved in that region. The Mideast is always a powder keg for, for chaos. And here's a land, a peaceful land asking for peace. So I just wanted to give you that because you know me, I don't speak uh, from the heart often. So I wanted to let you know our families going through that and so many other Armenians throughout the world are calling for peace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And our prayers go out to you and your family and we stand with you. Are there any other members at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. The stated meeting of October 15th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Hello. I, I like Speaker, to you have one this. minute? Uh, yeah, okay. So before we uh, do this, I want to make a ask for unanimous consent uh, to allow Councilmember Ulrich to cast votes today. Are there any objections to granting unanimous consent? No. With no that, objections, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you could call on Councilmember Ulrich to cast his votes. General Order Calendar, Councilmember Ulrich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of Reso 1476. I'm voting aye on all others. I want to apologize for being late. I had a, a very important meeting that just ran late, uh, but I, I want to vote aye on all with the exception of Reso 1476. Thank you very much. The stated meeting of October 15th, 2020 is now adjourned.